that a happy medium can be reached, or if we're just going to keep going down that route, if we've just if we've ruined ourselves with the uh, uh, with the overuse of, and the addiction to the point where we can't be trusted anymore. And those who and those who prescribe for us can't be trusted to do the right thing by us because they're so frightened of all the laws. Um, that was that was a difficult experience for you. Yeah, I had to write it out. You, you had to write it out, and you had a lot of pain. Are you saying that you can't go to your regular doctor? No. And not get a script for it? No. They, they're they're sending you to pain specialists because they don't want the responsibility of, um, they don't want the responsibility of uh, trying to keep you from getting addicted. So I guess these pain specialists, these, these, it's, the clinic we went to was, had something to do with advanced pain medication. Um, that's not its title, I'm not, I'm not giving away anything. But I saw, as we drove around town, I saw several pain clinics. And they were, they were not in the best parts of town. And they were not a, doc, a, a nice looking doctor's office like we go to for our primary. They, they, were, they were seedy looking. They were seedy looking and they were jammed full of people trying, trying to get the, trying to get what they need. Um, and I believe that we, it's been made so difficult that nobody who doesn't need it is going to go. I mean, you're not going to go, you can't get it because of an addiction anymore. Uh, they weed you out pretty fast. So if you're there, it's because you need to be. If you need to be, you're, ta you're taking advantage of. But the way the system works now, it's making people go out and do illegal things to get relief. And uh, I had surgery a year ago, and uh, the uh, surgeon gave me four or five, maybe maximum, six pills in case uh, the pain was too intolerable. And I forgot to tell my pain doctor. Do you know that he said that I broke my contract with him? And he, I, he, I, I had to leave his office. I so you're no longer his patient. And, uh, and they ended up going, putting me to this other place. What, what can I say? It just was not a happy experience. Do they? And, uh, Yes. Do they give you the meds right there, or do they give you a prescription? No, they prescribe them to your pharmacy. But your the before your primary physician had the right to give you pain medication. Now he does not. They took it away because of all the abuses. Well, he has the right, but he's reluctant. He wants to pass the buck because it's too it's too the laws are, the laws are so stringent. Um, that he doesn't want to get in trouble for making, for causing more people to be addicted. So I guess they feel that these pain clinics will, uh, will put a halt to that. I don't know how, because you're still going and getting, you're still going and getting what, what is to me a high dose of, of opiates. No, it's, it's just a, it's a crazy situation. And this is also a lesson for our young people. Like what I talked about earlier. Don't abuse this sort of stuff because the day is going to come in your life, you're going to need them. And you're not going to need them, you're going to need them for medicinal pur purposes, for your health, not for some joy ride. You know, it, they're, they're not fun. In any case, they're not fun. And, uh, yeah, there are side effects there. You have to cope with different side effects for having them. And the only reason that we're bringing this all up is that we want to do we have an update about Lynn, that she's come a long way from the 90s, and that it's hope for everybody that 
has ever had a drug issue that you can't get off. You can't break that cycle. You have to really want to, though. You have to want to, and sometimes it's in spite of your caregivers. It's in spite of your caregivers. And uh, when I met, when I, anyway, I, let's leave it at that. It's in spite of your caregivers, and it's here where the government's involved. And you wonder, should it be? The way things are laid out now. I don't know, I feel real ambivalent the way the opi opioid crisis has evolved and where it's going, and it leaves a great big question mark for those of us that need. Now she doesn't need what she, what she had before. I'm still coping with pain, but I've found other ways to cope with it, and there are times when I wish I would have, I would have uh, the opioid relief, but then I don't want to get, I don't want to go down that, that journey again. That, I don't want to go down that whole thing again because it would be too, it would be too easy to be, to find that relief and find it, and find it comforting. And you even said the other day that the Jesus prayer has helped you. Yeah, it does help. It, it, when, when I, when I, we talk about mantras when when I when I lie in bed and if I have the pain I say the Jesus prayer and, uh, and he helps he's there he answers he helps next time I'm going to tell you a, a, a wonderful story about um, it's a resurrection story that took place uh, in Russia during the Soviet regime and it's a very charming and wonderful story and our next uh, viewing you'll hear about this wonderful story and we'll talk a little bit about stewardship too the stewardship of the earth god bless you keep uh, both courage as mother Teresa would say good courage to carry you through every day Thank you for being with us. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Amen.